You may have seen these sites as some people call a GPL club. It's essentially a site where you can essentially get premium themes and plugins that you would usually pay for and get them for free. Now, I want to address this head on. I want to talk about whether these things are legal, whether they're legit, whether they're ethical, and should you even bother using them. So in order to know about these sites, uh, about GPL, you need to know what the GPL license is. So GPL stands for General Public License, and the most popular option out there is called the GNU General Public License. And this happens to be the license that WordPress itself was created by. It essentially means that the, the software is completely free and open source. It means you can distribute it anywhere that you please. It means that you can create uh, derivative works from it and basically change the code and that any derivative works that are created from it need to also carry the same license, which means that if you create any uh, fork or even a plug or a theme on WordPress, it gets distributed with GPL, which means other people can then distribute them freely. That's the GPL license. It's essentially the foundation of the way the WordPress community works and a lot of other open source projects, by the way, and it really, because of the GPL license, that's why we have the WordPress ecosystem that we do. So it's a really, really good thing. You can see right here on the WordPress website that it says it is done under the GMU public license, that it's under GPL version two or later, they're now up to version three. And it says part of this license outlines requirements for derivative work such as plugins or themes. And that basically they have to use the same GPL license as WordPress itself. Now they openly say there is some legal gray area here regarding what is considered a derivative work. But we feel strongly that plugins and themes are derivative work and thus inherit the GPL license. Okay, so if WordPress is the GPL license and all the themes and plugins are typically GPL license and, and that means that they are free, what is it that we're actually paying for here? And it's a really, really good question. The, the true answer here is that really what you're doing is you are paying for the ongoing development, maintenance, and enhancement of that plugin by the developer team, and you're paying for their ongoing support. That's what you're paying for. Now, aside from the, the, the GPL license itself, which protects the code, the developer also holds rights and trademarks to the name of the plugin, the graphics, the branding, all those types of things. But that's outside the context of what we're talking about here. You as a site owner who's actually out there buying plugins, essentially you are paying for the ongoing support and updates on those plugins. Technically, you're not really buying access to the actual code because it is GPL and therefore ultimately free to you. Now, I don't want you to underestimate the importance of that. You might think, hey, I just want the software. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to nab this bad boy for free. It's really not the best way to think about it because you know that WordPress is a constantly evolving environment, that security issues do pop up, and that things get changed all the time. And so don't underestimate the importance of that ongoing support and ongoing updates. If you get one of these premium plugins for free, you're not getting any updates. You are potentially open up to security problems, you do open up your risk of potentially uh, malicious code being inserted into your site because how do you know that the people who made that software available to you didn't evolve, you know, change it in some way and not tell you? You don't really know. And so there are some definite trade-offs here. And that is what I want to talk about with these GPL clubs. So a GPL club is a site such as this one that essentially is offering to give you access to premium WordPress themes, plugins, WooCommerce extensions, and blah, blah, blah for free. Essentially, these are premium plugins you would normally go out and pay for a premium license for, but you can just download them. Now, typically, these sites do have their own charge associated with them in a lot of cases, but then, uh, but it's significantly cheaper. Okay, that's how it works. And and in, in, in full transparency, I actually do have an account here on GPLDL.com. Um, another really popular one out there is called GPL Vault. Uh, th these guys have been around for a little while, and it's the same basic idea. Um, and they have actually a plugin if, if you're a subscriber on these guys I mean if you click over you'll see it's 15 a month or $90 a year but one thing they do have is a plugin that will actually help you keep your uh, the plugins that you get from these guys up to date which is kind of a neat little thing so the first question you always wonder is is it legal for them to even do this well obviously under the terms of the GPL 
it is legal for them to do it. They're not going to get into any trouble doing this. Now, the next question is, is it right? Is it ethical? That is where there might be a gray zone. It really depends on how you want to look at it. Um, and, and then in, as an end user, I think it depends on how you're ultimately going to use a site like this. Because the thing is, they're allowed to do it, but at the same time, you want to always keep in mind the hours and hours of man hours and ongoing support that it takes to create these themes and plugins in the first place. And so I, I don't encourage uh, you to have an attitude of, of, of minimizing that and saying, oh, I just want to get whatever I can for free. There's an a obvious value there. And there's also a matter of exchange of providing those developers, uh, you know, what they ask for in exchange for the software that you choose to use because nobody's actually making you use it. So let's look at some of the pros and cons here of using these GPL sites. Is it, is it the right thing to do? Should you use them? Should you avoid them like the plague? It really comes down to what you're going to use them for. Um, at the end, I look at the hard work that the developers put into these plugins as a super valuable thing. If they did not do that work and support the work that they did, we wouldn't have any of these plugins to dance around with and use to begin with. And so it's a very important role. With that being said, I do realize that these GPL club sites do play a role. First of all, there are some people out there who just straight up cannot afford all of these premium licenses. And the general ethos of WordPress is to try to be, be accessible and to try to allow things to be open and communication to be free. And so there is definitely that philosophy behind a lot of this. It's why the GPL license was created to begin with. I think if you use one of these GPL uh, sites as a try before you buy type of scenario, it can be really useful because otherwise sometimes you might wonder if some premium plugin might actually work for you and you don't really know, but you really have no option but to just buy the thing. Um, and then if it doesn't work, you gotta go and request a refund and that type of thing. If you use a GPL site like this, you're breaking no rules at all by trying out that plugin. But if if you find that that plugin really does suit your business well and will solve a problem for you, I think it makes perfect sense ethically for you to go and pay the original developer for the ongoing support and the ongoing updates of this plugin that you've chosen to use in your business. I've also seen my uh, share of plugins that just don't really warrant a premium price. It's not because of just my judgment, it's because I've actually watched what they do and they barely ever issue any updates. It's not really the type of plugin where you would actually need any support to begin with. And you know, I've seen that with some of the WooCommerce extensions as an example. Some of these things, you go to the WooCommerce site and you see all these extensions that you might need to make your store run in a certain way and they have a premium price on there, but it's kind of dumb that they've got a premium price. I mean, they have the right to ask, but they are all under the GPL license and they barely ever do anything to support the product to begin with. I actually don't see anything wrong with uh, accessing that code under GPL and just moving forward with it. Now on the flip side, obviously when you download from these types of sites, you are not gonna get any support at all. Don't try to contact the developer and be like, hey, help me out with this thing. You did not pay them at all, so they owe you no support at all, okay? That's a really important point. Secondly is the updates. Um, when you have a license code onto a pro plugin, you're gonna get automatic updates into your site right from the developer when those things are released and usually really, really fast, okay? Uh, whereas if you get a, a plugin from a GPL site, you're not getting automatic updates from that. Not only that, you are dependent on whoever runs that GPL site to go and basically manually grab the update from whatever their license might be, okay? And so there's often a delay. I mean, sometimes you'll see a delay where it, a, a plugin might not show up with the updated version for, you know, a few days or even a few months in some cases, in which case whatever enhancements are there, you don't have. Or let's say they actually fixed bugs and security problems. You don't have those, those patches on your site for whatever length of time that is because you're not actually paying for the license. 
you're also kind of depending on them not to have hacked up the, the code in any way. I mean, some of these guys, they will go into the code and they will null the software in order to remove the license uh, limitations, okay? But what's to say they didn't do something else or insert some malicious code into the software? In most cases, that's probably not true. But if you go to some, one of these degen sites that are just like, yeah, hey, here it is, you pay $5 a year and you're gonna like get everything. You know, those types of sites, uh, they're, they're, there's no quality there and they have more incentive to just try to put malicious code into your site so they can make additional money on the back end, so to speak, from their perspective. So there are additional security issues that can come up. I And the playing around that I've done, I've not run into any, but I have heard about them. And it's just something that you need to be aware of. Okay, so that is these GPL clubs in a nutshell. I just figured it was something to talk about. I, I recently came across it again because I had a new client sign up and they were using a web host that was basically straight up saying, we're gonna give you access to all these different pro plugins for free. And I thought that was super sketchy and I didn't really like it. And it kind of was served as the spark for this very blog post. It's a subject that I haven't really talked about much because I didn't want to steal any thunder from the developers of some of the plugins that you guys know that I use and I, and I promote and I recommend them to you. And I'm not one that would ever want to take anything away from that. They created an awesome software that is good enough that I use it in my business and I recommend it to my clients. So the last thing I want to do is do anything that makes people think they can try to skate around that system. But the fact remains, these GPL sites do exist. WordPress itself uses this software license. And so it just is what it is. I wanted to share my thoughts about how these things work, whether you should look at them or not. I think if used in the right way and in an ethical way, they do have some kind of role in this WordPress ecosystem. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Talk to you soon.